Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at 10 items that the Cowboys would use on the trail. Uh, they had their chuck wagon, they could use it, keep their items there, but a lot of times they were out for a few days on the trail by themselves. And so we're going to, with a little assistance from Rio here, we decided just to talk about those things because we can learn things from history. Now these items are definitely old school, there's new technology, new ways to do it. But this will give us a lot of ideas of men who lived on the land. Of course, one of the big ones was a head cover. And it's kind of funny, but you know, these type hats didn't come really around until the late 1800s. Uh, most cowboys were wearing bowlers and different type hats like that. But uh, definitely this is the iconic cowboy hat and of course the Stetson and those type. A lot of cowboys wore sombreros, especially those that were down toward the Southwest uh, because it kept the sun off of their face, off their head, and it kept them cool. Uh, and of course in the winter time it gave them some warmth. Now another big one is the bandana and of course a lot of villains would use the bandana uh, to cover up their face to hide their identity. For the cowboy he would cover his face especially if there was like a brush fire or there was a, a windstorm or a sandstorm and he could put that bandana around his face keep himself protected. It also kept his neck cool and in the summertime and then in the winter time it could actually help to keep it warm and kind of seal out the cold. Uh, but could also be improvised with a stick into a sack. I mean, there's a ton of different things. In fact, I have a video, 50 different uses for the bandana for survival. And this is something that I keep in all my survival kits, a good bandana. Of course, a good pair of footwear. And uh, here I've just got some cowboy boots, but you know, guys having footwear that'll last, that you can use in rugged terrain that you can get around. And so cowboy boots really fit the bill. Now, typically they kept a two quart canteen, uh, a lot of times made of wood, leather, <laughs> metal, uh, different things. I mean, this just has a kind of a cowboy appearance, but this is really just a new canteen, but similar to the style and some that they would carry. And if you've ever seen the old Westerns where they had a couple of canteens laid across the horn of the saddle, water is life and you can only live three days without water. Uh, so make sure you have your water source. Now having a good cook set, if you're out on the trail, definitely the chuck wagon would take care of a lot of this. Uh, they would come in, eat after a long day, but when they were out on the trail for days or maybe again traveling back to town for some reason, uh, you know, having something to be able to eat in, to cook in, you know, your coffee obviously is mandatory for a lot of people, including myself. Uh, and then, of course, a, a nice spoon or fork or whatever. And definitely that's where your knife would come into play as well. Today we have lightweight camping and there's a lot of really ultralight pieces that you can use and sets that nestle together but in the old west that wasn't necessarily the case plus they had a horse to carry a lot of this stuff obviously having a good fixed blade knife and uh, was critical now this one actually was probably a little short this is about five inches this is the se nesmuk uh, this would have not necessarily been around but something kind of close to this same style was used and of course you have your leather sheath but uh, knives were a tool that was a must on the trail. And guys, it's really your number one survival tool as far as a tool. Prepare food, even use for self-defense, clean game. I mean, there's just so many cutting rope, so many things that a knife would come in handy for. Having a tinder box was really important. Having a way to start fire. Uh, here, of course, they didn't have Altoids back then, but uh, keeping some char cloth and uh, keeping that or some kind of fire tender where they could light the fire and then close it back up. Uh, having your flint and your steel, a very important item for the cowboy. And you know, here's some wax jute. You know, they could just cover that jute with wax and it was flammable and having small sticks, which could be impregnated with wax, but you know, just getting that fire started, just having the basics to be able to get out there and then find the wood or whatever to make the bigger fire. But having a good fire kit, guys, is essential. It gives you warmth, heat, light, boosts morale, keeps predators away. I mean, there's just a lot of reasons why you need to have a good fire kit. To make it this primitive, nah, not necessarily. There's a lot of great options out there. But definitely knowing how to use these items is a good way to start. Now, while the rope was a very important part of the cowboy's tools, I mean, that was part of the tools of his trade. But one thing that he also had with him, this kind of similar, are just strips of rawhide and they could use this to tie things down. I mean, there's a lot of uses. Uh, in fact, when I asked my daughter, I said, you haven't have any of these leather strips? She goes, oh yeah. She goes, I use those things all the time. And that's just riding horses and enjoying them, not necessarily out in the old west on the trail. Now, obviously we have paracord now and we can use it. But back then, 
this was a really strong alternative. And having a bedroll, if you've ever seen old Western or even old Civil War movies or pictures, and they've got that really long bedroll slipped around their body. Uh, this kept them warm at night. It kept them all out of the elements. Now, this is a really heavy canvas and it's actually impregnated with some kind of wax. So it's going to keep you from the elements, but it's heavy. But if you got a horse, <laughs> it's not so heavy. Now, obviously they wouldn't have used paracord, but any kind of rope would do being able just to bind this up. And of course you got these eyelets and that probably wasn't the case either. Uh, you can just wrap it up with an old belt, but uh, this way you got a handle and you got your bedroll secure. So what we have is we have this canvas and inside we have a wool blanket and the wool is going to keep you really warm. Guys, the thing is you climb in, you just pull it over you, you pull the underneath up around your feet and you can really seal yourself up in this. I mean, it is warm. And then of course this canvas keeps the, the elements and gives you a little layer of protection from the ground, from losing body heat. You can use one of the standard propylene tarps and then just get a fleece blanket. That would definitely drop the weight way down. If you don't have a sleeping bag or if you have people that join you that need something to sleep in, that's a great way to put something together and uh, very cheap. A lot cheaper than a sleeping bag and yet it'll get them by. We do have a video on this and if you want to see it demonstrated just check it out. I have a paracord string. It's a camouflage. I can't find it in this grass. <laughs> Where are you? You doggy. Seriously, I can't find it. Oh, there it is. A main tool for the cowboy was a rifle. And obviously the lever action rifle is what we've seen, but a lot of guys were using old sharps and even black powder muskets uh, because the old west was tamed over many decades. And so, but the old lever action was one of the fastest. Really came into play after the Civil War. And uh, this is an old Henry and a lot of times in 4570, but there were a lot of different calibers that the old um, rifle came in obviously for self-defense, but also for hunting. And uh, that was a very important part. Having a good rifle in a scabbard was a constant companion to the cowboy. Uh, a lot of times he kept his reloading equipment also with it. So he could make his own reloads if he needed to. Then of course, the six shooter. Now the six shooter was not necessarily a common item for cowboys. Uh, this was something that a lot of the gunfighters carried and people in the cities. Uh, of course, in the old west, everybody had a, si a six shooter but that wasn't necessarily the case in the Old West. Six Shooter was definitely a luxury for the cowboy. Now out on the trail, of course, during the winter time, having the right kind of jacket and uh, something to really keep you warm because out on a horse and you're sitting up a little higher, <laughs> that wind blows. And so having something to be able to cover you up and yet keep you warm. But guys, honestly, on a day like today, the cowboy would have left this at the chuck wagon. Now, when it comes to really inclement weather where it's raining and sometimes there would be rain for days and having a good duster or something, a rain jacket that would keep that rain off of you, a lot of times they would impregnate this with wax, keep the water running off. Uh, and so, you know, it just, it's a really long, uh, obviously it comes all the way down to where my boots are. But when you're on the horse and you have this over you, you want to cover as much of your body as you can. And so a small little raincoat is not really enough. And two, keep the dust and the wind and all those things off of you because this really, I mean, it really breaks the wind. It keeps it off. And of course, you can't really look like a desperado unless you have one of these on coming into town. Desperado. So guys, this doesn't mean that you necessarily use the items that we've shown. It's just an adaptation to modern technology and new things, but you can use those as well. But uh, guys, cowboys lived close to the land. And so there's some good lessons to learn and uh, I want to thank Rio here for joining me right here at this video. What a good boy. And guys, I want to thank Sarah Mack for helping out with the camera and also with having Rio ready for me to do this video. Uh, and if you are into horses at all, check out Brattle95. I'll have the link down below in the description. That's Sarah Mack's horse channel. Guys, when it comes to prepping and survival, there's a lot of different information out on the web and it takes a lot to try to find and source what's credible and what's not. One of the best sources that I know is Survival Dispatch Insider. They use some of the top names in the survival community. It is really just a, one of the best resources on the web. We upload one video that is exclusive to the Insider every week and we're just glad to be a part. Uh, I'm going to have a link down below in the description. Uh, I think it's well worth checking out. Be strong, be of good courage. 
God bless America. Long live the Republic. You ready to go? Let's go. These guys really lived, these guys really lived by the land. But you, where are you going there, buddy? Where are you going? Huh? Hey guys, today we're gonna talk about cowboy survival. It's too dark because of the light in the background. Tools that they used back in the old west on the trail. And uh, today we have Rio. <laughs> he wants to turn us around, so we're not gonna be able to use that. Then that cowboy had to have him a concealed carry permit. That was, you didn't know the P365 was out back in the 1800s. Now maybe in the high desert, the cowboys needed all this, but here in South Carolina, this stuff has got to go. 